Welcome to Mad About Money. I'm Maddie Alexander Grout, and this is the podcast that is Mad About Money. I have the lovely Emma Jackson from Be Money Savvy. She is a money content creator. Um, she's big on Instagram and she's getting there on TikTok as well. So, Emma, it's lovely to have you with us today. Tell us a bit about you and what you do. So, yeah, my name's Emma. I run BeMoneySavvy.com, which is a financial education website, I guess, but it's mostly me just sharing my um finding my way through side of souls and budgeting all the things that I do I post it on there and and hopefully people can use it to improve their financial situation as well so that it, do you want me to say how I started or are we going to get on I'll that? go into I'll go into that I will <laughs> go into that so um so yeah um I mean first of all it's really really needed at the moment um side hustles Let's talk a little bit about those first, because I always find side hustles really, really interesting. I hate the word hustle, though, and I really feel like it should be called something else, maybe like side income. Yeah, because it is side income. and I don't feel like people should have to hustle to get there. What are your top side hustles? I think so. My favorite ones. I mean, blogging is is a favorite one of mine. Yeah, of course. Um, but then, so it's it's favourite for a different reason. So I really like mystery shopping. Um, probably not for the income that you get from it because you don't make you no. don't make you rich. But for the experience of going out, getting a free meal, um, a free bowling session, um, a couple of free drinks, I absolutely love that. Just trying new things and getting it for free, just in, in exchange for a bit of a review. Um, so that's definitely second. And then I think surprisingly uh market research calls I think would be my next one um which is interesting for me because if you ask like my colleagues my friends I'm quite quiet but I really like sharing my opinion in a market research call I could go all day I could I could rip apart a website tell you exactly what I like about it or a product um and it's it's pretty well paid as well like usually for an hour's work you can get like 60 70 100 pounds that's so really good. good. That's yeah. surprising. And actually, that's something that I have not yet dabbled in. And I am very opinionated. So I feel like maybe I'd be quite good at that as well. Yeah. What, how do you get started with stuff like that? Um, so I can't remember how I initially, I, actually, I'll, I'll tell a, a funny story. Actually, my mum and dad, my mum and nan used to go shopping around the um shopping centers and they would have market research people there so they'd say like come over we'll give you a tenner take 10 minutes try some biscuits give us your opinion so my mum and my nan have always done it and they've always ah. talked to me about it um but I've sort of gone for the online side of it so I don't know if that still happens in city centers um maybe lockdown maybe prevented that a little bit but I do it online, so I use a couple of different websites, uh, Respondent, Bunnyfield, and User Interviews. They tend to be the three that I use the most. Um, and then I just get emailed when there's a new study. I usually have to fill in a bit of a survey to check that you're the right demographics. Yeah. And then they ring you, organise a call. Sometimes it's one-to-one -one and sometimes it's in a group. But, yeah, I've done loads now. And, in fact, in fact over Christmas I did a community one where you – you popped in like for over a period of six weeks, you popped in, did a call, filled in an online diary and I got £230 for it. And wow. it was pretty low effort. Um, I mean, that, so that's one. a good, a good mum side income, isn't it? Yeah. Really? You know, definitely. if you've not got much time, you're trying to do stuff around maybe a new baby or like, yeah, I can see that being a really good little yeah. side income which we're now yeah. going to call it so so Emma what is your money story where did you start how did you get to doing what you're doing now yeah so um from the very beginning I was born in quite into quite a low-income family it's usually the case with people that are interested in in this kind of stuff um and like don't get me wrong I am extremely grateful for my childhood my parents are incredible um I've got such a great relationship with them and they are in a better position now than they were when I was growing up yeah but I definitely had like an awareness that money was an issue for my mum and dad mm. um like I remember it was probably like a weekend my mum would sit with a folder that had all our bills or bank statements and she'd do like a budget for the month which fully would recommend but I was aware that yeah. my mom was doing it as a kid um and then my dad really hated his job 
but whenever he was offered overtime, he felt like he had to take it because because mm. they were, um, in all honesty, they were in debt and it was following poor advice from a bank. Um, oh. So throughout my whole childhood, they were in debt and they were trying to sort of earn some side income to to pay it off, but also just keep their head above water as as um, sort of living very much paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. Um, then I, when I went to college, I got EMA, Education Maintenance Allowance, which doesn't exist in England anymore, but um, that pretty much allowed me to sort of live a bit more once I'd gone to college. It paid for me to get to college. It paid for food, paid for just a little bit extra as well. Um, so I didn't have to rely on my parents. Um, very similar story at university. So I received the maximum student loan, maximum student grant. Right. Um, extra bursaries for being on a low income and again that allowed me to sort of live without relying on my parents too much um, in fact a funny story actually while I was at university I had a combination of eight different jobs that I would do wow. all at the same time that's um, impressive yeah I told people this and they just my, my partner does not believe me <laughs> when, I, when I told them this um but yeah I have from like lifeguarding um I trained to be a personal trainer so did that as well did lots of sports coaching bit of PE teaching um yeah just a, a fair few jobs even did like I picked up a few extra sort of temporary jobs like cleaning student accommodation that kind of Ooh, thing I bet yeah, that was right it, was, it wasn't my best <laughs> Ooh, I, I, did, I did cleaning hotel rooms um and that was like I remember finding a used condom on the floor once and being oh, like I can't no. do this again like it was just <laughs> so grim <laughs> yeah students produce a lot of hair um I think oh. that was what shocked me the most <laughs> oh oh that's so horrible but yeah, yeah I can imagine I can imagine that paid quite well as well well it, to be honest it wasn't my best paying side of soul um I think because I was sort of contracted through a subcontractor I think basically the money got lost along the along the path. Um, mm. Yeah, it weren't particularly well paid, and I was absolutely shattered at the end of it as well. I bet, it was yeah. Hard work. Um, and this is me as quite a fit, sporty, personal training university, yeah. student, but it knackered me out cleaning. It was. I take my hats off to people who do that as a job. Oh um, god, yeah. I mean, I, I I could probably do it. Like, I'm also like really scared of spiders. So if I saw a spider, I'd be like. Yeah. No! scary um but it, I mean it might help me lose some weight maybe maybe in the future <laughs> it's definitely a, a job that is good for the fitness but also hmm. can have some extra money um, yeah. <laughs> we love those side hustles that offer two things at the same time absolutely yeah definitely so um that's throughout university and then when I graduated which was in 2016 um I started looking for a full-time job and I found a job that I was like, this, this is the job. And like, and I went in hard, um, bought new interview clothes, really prepared for it, got offered it, but got offered it as a job share. Oh which, no. What was the job? It was, it was like campaigns for um a student union. So oh. definitely like a brilliant graduate job. Like yes. you're still sort of in that student sphere, lots yes. of things to it um very varied and yeah I was offered it as a job share which at the time I saw as like a major blow but mm. I'm gonna take it because it's my only current job offer um so I took it and within a, a couple of months I realized that part-time wage was enough for me to live off quite mm. comfortably I had money left over at the end of the month and oh, I was wow. doing fine um and the fact that it was because it was 50% part time as well. So I had 50% of the of the rest of the week to focus on whatever I wanted. Um, and I definitely wasn't lazy with that time. So I used it yeah. to do all sorts. See, um, that, that's really impressive because like I I did a similar I did a similar job after leave, after when I say leaving uni, like I was actually supposed to not be there for a while. Um, and I basically pretended to be a student for about four years after I was kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> so, long story but I basically spent my time drinking so you did very well there <laughs> <laughs> yeah I um I, I literally used it to do all sorts like, I remember um I did like this it was it was like surveying people within within university accommodation 
Um, I was going to all sorts of job interviews to apply for extra things, applied to do some like travel leave and, and go abroad and do a bit of work experience. Um, this whole time I'm doing like online surveys, my market research. Yeah. Um, so I'm so I'm definitely able to like build a bit of side income while earning enough part time. And it's super varied. My job's varied outside of work I'm doing loads of varied stuff I'm going and fetching as many freebies as I want because I work in the city centre and I've got loads of time to just trot around and pick up the freebies from various apps um so it wasn't until the next year that I think my colleagues started to clock that I I wasn't struggling I wasn't waiting until payday like they were um I remember them counting down the days until like we've got three days till payday and I'd be like oh cool really <laughs> cool yeah and they were a bit like how are you earning half of what I'm earning but you're fine like what's going what what's happening there um and then I'm telling them about what I'm doing on my days off and I'm going mm. here there and everywhere and earning bits of money um and they started to come to me for advice for for tips um I'd find a new app and I'd refer them to it and it got to the point where I was like, I'm spending a lot of time explaining all these things that I'm doing. So I should just put this on the internet. Yeah. Um, and that was what I did the, the following year. So I bought the domain name beamoneysavvy.com in 2017. Initially, it just had like side hustle reviews and app reviews and referral offers. Um, and if I'm being honest, when I originally bought that domain name, I didn't think it would earn like much money um if I'm being completely honest I thought maybe I'd be able to share a referral link or two on there and it would get me an, an extra fiver here and there um I had no idea that you could earn money from that when I started mm. it um so in 2017 I earned nothing from blogging and then 2018 I think it jumped to 90 pounds for the year and then it started to slow snowball very quickly um until Last year, I ended up earning two and a half grand a month from blogging. That's amazing. Is, it's a madness for a, a side income, yeah. for something I enjoy doing, that I set up never thinking it would earn money, just set up because I liked doing it. Um, it still that's shocks the best, me. That's the best it. way to do something, though, because you're passionate about it and you love it. So That's it, it yes. Yeah. Um, and then in 2019, I wanted to buy my first home. Um, I think I'd moved back in with my parents for a little bit, partially to save a bit of money, but also like convenience. My parents are cool. I love spending time with them. They do um, washing and stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I wanted to buy my first home. I moved back in with my parents. It helped me save a little bit of money. I gave them rent, um, but I definitely wasn't paying the no. rent that you would pay. Um, and I, I, I started working at my dad's work to earn a bit of extra money as well as all my other side hustles and my blogging um and what, so what happened what happened to this to the student uh to the, the the job you had then so I carried it on um throughout ah. the whole time uh, oh, I, reached, wow. I only just left it in all honesty um, Oh wow during lockdown I left and, and got a new job but yeah I that I, I lived a good life on that job um yeah. on wage it helped me buy my first home although the part-time wage aspect was an issue with the mortgage application um yeah. bloody mortgage people <laughs> I know drives me nuts. Uh, <laughs> um so initially I was rejected for a mortgage and then I, I managed to find a brilliant mortgage broker who sorted me straight out got me a mortgage offer managed to buy my own my own little one bed flat which was Amazing. which I still just think is just brilliant um and then Funnily enough, it was the mortgage affordability that that got, caused me to get rejected. Um, but two years later, I paid off the mortgage completely. Wow. So affordability measure was quite off, I would say. Screw um, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then that sort of brings me to, so I paid it off in 2021. And then since then, I've just, I've got a new job, which um, also is a brilliant, varied job that finances my life. Um, but part, still part time there. or full time? Part time, yeah. Three days Brilliant. a week is one. Nice. Um, and then I blog just on the other two days a week, and it's 
it's going pretty, pretty brilliant. We're in 2023. I feel comfortable with my finances. I'm still blogging, sharing my side hustle things. Um, started investing as well, which I never do. I know. <laughs> where Where are you investing? So I invest with Vanguard into the FTSE 100. Um, yeah. It's taken me a long time to get comfortable with investing. And yeah. If I speak about it with my parents, they're like, Don't, like you're you're going to lose money. It's a scam. Um, so there's still very much that attitude. But I have I've done my own research. I'm I'm feeling absolutely. Um, and for me, paying off my mortgage, which I knew I could do, was the final like, yep, yeah, ticked that off. I'm ready to to start investing now. It was a small mortgage, I'll add as well. It was a little one bed flat, so it wasn't a massive mortgage. It's still impressive. Don't do yourself any misjustice and say it's really hard and to have the mindset to pay off a mortgage because most people go and get a mortgage and even if they're saving money they'd rather spend it on something else so how did it feel the last mortgage payment and then knowing that you've had that chunk of money to spend on something else that must be quite a good feeling yeah definitely you know I ever the day I bought my flat was the day I started planning for how I would pay off the mortgage um so it was like my like I was fully um on the goal of paying it off and I remember paying it off and I've still got the letter actually to say it's full balance is paid it's settled it's done did Uh, you frame it I'd be like yes I'm tempted (laughs) to frame it (laughs) it's saved it's saved safely uh but it's not quite framed yet but yeah I was I was ecstatic and funnily enough there was lots of money content creators that suggested that maybe I shouldn't pay off the mortgage and invest the money instead. I'm glad I just stuck to what I wanted yeah. to do. And I think that um, I was asked for advice recently on investing. And I think that is my advice when it comes to investing. It's it's when you feel comfortable. And I, and I don't Absolutely. mean, to yeah. you, um, you know, oh, I'll do this first. I'll do this first. You've got to have your mindset. I will do this and then I will start doing this. And I think that's that's really important doing what, I think it's the financial decisions that help you sleep at night. That's what's important. And for yeah. me, paying off my mortgage was, and and I, again, I think I relate this back to my parents. I saw them struggling to keep up with those mortgage payments. And I, d- I didn't want to be in that position in my late mm. 40s, going into my 50s, still paying off this mortgage that is keeping me paycheck to paycheck. I want it gone. Um, and now when I share like my budget for the month, and I don't put a rent or a mortgage on there. People are like, wait, where, where are you living? What are you doing? Um, and it's it's one of them that often pops up on my content. Is like, oh, I paid that off. Obviously, this is not everyone's situation, but it is. It's brilliant to not have it there. You are essentially you are financially free. You know, there's not very many people in like that aren't millionaires that can say that they are actually in that position. And you know, you're working in a part time job that is so so inspiring, and it will be for anybody who's who's listening to this. Um, I just I just think that's absolutely incredible like well done like I've, I always feel like when you say well done to someone it sounds really patronizing but I genuinely mean that from like the bottom of my heart it is very very impressive um, and just just thinking about the fact that if you were to ever lose your job you would be absolutely fine um, you know you could just go and get scraps from bins and stuff and still live you'd be fine <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe not fine, but you wouldn't have to worry about losing your house. And that is such a worry, especially with the cost of living crisis, with how much money people are spending on bills and food. You know, I, I bet that was a massive relief knowing that you know, you're you actually in an OK situation and you know how to do all these side hustles. But so you can always make more money, which is really cool. Yeah, I think, um, it, you know, as well, it's growing up watching my dad hate his job. Mm. I wanted to be in a position where I didn't ever have to do a job that I hated yeah Um, so paying off the mortgage was definitely another tick there like now I don't have to think I've got this big mortgage payment I can just work a job that I just enjoy doing and and to some extent I'm in that position I think my colleagues often say it like would you be here if x y and z and I'm like yeah I would I'd still be here doing this job um so I'm, I'm like not really in it for the money the money's nice um but yeah it's not it's not the reason I go to work which I think is 
it's, it's massive. It's a, such a mm. weight off your shoulder not having to go to a job that you hate because of the money. Um, Absolutely. And I think that, that has always been my aim from being like 18. I never wanted to work a job that I hated. And yeah, yeah. I'm nicely in that position now. Emma, do you mind me asking how old you are? Yeah, I'm 20, 29. Oh my God, you're still a baby, not a baby. Like, uh, but, you know, compared to like an old 40 year old like me, uh, you know, I just don't think I could ever imagine being mortgage free at 29. Like, I mean, it took it took me until I was 30, 31 to buy my first house. And even at that point, I, I was I'd only just paid off my debts and I was in a lot of debt. Um, and when I bought my my shared ownership house, you know, I paid uh, I think it's about 20 grand 20 grand deposit so I had to save for quite a long time for that um, and now I'm just like oh it's a mortgage I just leave it and I get on with it and it, but I find that there are other things that actually spending my money on I, I prefer but I got into investing last year and I started investing in small businesses and I reckon last year I must have spent about three grand maybe on supporting small businesses which you know is nice Will I get a return on that investment ever? Probably not. And actually, that three grand would have been way better off being paid off my mortgage. So it's all, it is about where your priorities lie, isn't it? And I think, yeah. you know, just from us having this conversation, it's made me think, hmm, I probably should have done that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, lessons learned. And, you know, there'll be people who are listening to this podcast who have, you know, always thought I could never pay off my mortgage. But you can. So what tips would you give to people in that situation? Did you have to kind of scrimp and save or was it more of a case of you just allocated extra money and just paid it off? Um, for me, it was it was just allocating extra money. So um, my mortgage deal, and I think this is probably the case for most people, you could overpay by 10%. Mm. Um, so I just did that 10%. And I mean, bear in mind my wage it was based off a part-time wage. So my mortgage payment was really, really low. Mm. Um, so I could afford that extra 10% quite comfortably, despite the banks thinking I couldn't. Um, so I always paid off the extra 10%, but then you can't pay off any extra without incurring a fee. Yeah. So I had a two-year fix and I thought, right, I am going to save as much money as I can to pay off at the end of the two-year fix before I then get on to another fix um and it just so happened that I managed to save enough to pay it off in full but if that's not your case and you've got a much bigger mortgage trying to save a lump sum for the end of your fix so you can pay off a lump sum and then get back on a fix um would be my next tip as well you know you've got your side income that you could that you could be making and I pretty much just used the whole of that side income for that kind of stuff for yeah. uh, for building wealth for saving money or paying off debts or anything like that. That's what I used that side income for. Um, I used my monthly wage and I budgeted it all so that it was like I saved twenty five percent. I um, now it's very different. So I'm thinking, what did I do previously? So I saved twenty five percent and then fifty percent was maybe my living costs. And then twenty the other twenty five percent, I'd try and do something positive with it. So that might be that might look very different in a different month. But currently, that's investing that twenty five percent. So I'd have my wage all budgeted for the extra income on top, so the side income, and um, be that a bank switching bonus that I do quite keen on those because it's just free tax free money. Um, a bit of a survey income, market research income doing extra part-time jobs I'd literally just save it all um unless I had something big to to pay for it was all just saved and that is what ultimately I used to pay off my mortgage all the side incomes um so yeah it, it definitely is just earning extra bits of money even if it's um I once talked to someone and they said you're very much a save the pennies and the pounds will take care of themselves person and I, was yeah. Like, yeah, I will do anything even if it's just for an extra 10p in fact reminded me I've got a 10p survey that I'm going to do after this podcast um so even just little bits like that because it does quickly add up um whenever I go to the supermarket first I'll start by buying a gift card that's cheap like I'm paying less 
for a gift card. I know exactly where you can start getting those from April. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might have to switch to where I get them Yes. From. Yes, you will. You will. Yes. Come. Come with me on my journey. <laughs> <laughs> and then using a cashback card to buy those yeah. as well. So getting cashback on the discounted gift cards. And then while I'm there, I will, so my locals, Morrison's, it's not the cheapest, but it's cheaper in petrol for us. So we go to Morrison's and we've got our more card, which usually gives us like 10% off fruit and veg or 10% off me or 10% off something else. Um, Every now and again, it has a coupon for like two pound off or a pound off. So we use that and then we'll also get, uh, so I've got Green Jane, Shop Me Home, Check Out Smart check them every time all of them all free anything that's free I get on there and then I also check for things that are discounted that might actually be free and you don't realize so it'll say a pound off and when you go to check it on the shelf it's actually only a pound so that's also free but it just doesn't say free on the app Uh, so I started checking that as well so we end up I probably average around like 50 60 pounds worth of free food every month which obviously reduces our food bill massively. Um, and then again, this money means I can save more towards the mortgage. So it's yeah. just all the extra little bits, I guess. And this is the thing. So I I get people saying to me, oh, you know, it's it's not it's not worth it for like a three and a half percent discount or whatever. But if you think about like if you spend an average of say like a hundred pounds, you're gonna get three pounds fifty back on that hundred pounds. And if you spend £100 a week on your shopping, you know, that's, I can't do maths, but whatever, four times, four times, five times, £3.50 is. Think about that over the year. That's actually a really, really good saving. And yeah. if, even if you just put that into a, into an account, just every single month, by the end of the year, you'd probably have enough to like go to Butlins or, you know, take the kids to a theme park or do something that's actually different to what you normally do. Or even if you just invested that money, um, and that's why people are like, well, why why should we buy discounted vouchers? And the difference between so the reason why you have to pay for mine is because you get the discount off without having to wait for any cash back. So it's quite good. I mean, I know that people like to save in different ways and I use um, all the cash back apps, really. Um, you know, my my favorite, uh, my favorites, I guess, top cash back. Um, I really like Jam Donut at the moment. I think that's quite a good one. Um, Karma vouchers I use, um, and and also I use things like Kids Pass for days out. Um, you know, really use useful apps. But I think I I'm one of those people. I'd rather save the money in my pocket than give it to somebody else and wait for it to to build up in a cash pot. Yeah, um, yeah. But I guess people view that in a different you know, in a different way, don't they? Yeah. Um, definitely. But yeah, I think so. I'm, I am doing an offer though for the first 500 people that sign up. They will get it for free forever. So it's a good way. Hmm. Oh, you're going to get it free anyway, love. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 going to be it's going to be exciting. I think you know it's it's a it's a new new thing for people to talk about. Anyway, I completely digressed because this is not about me. It's about you. So <laughs> let's move back. Um. So where are you in your journey now? What's new for Emma? So like I mentioned, I've started investing and I think that's that's probably my sort of financial priority at the moment. I think so I did this like really random. I, I couldn't even remember the name of the website. It was like a online financial health check. Um, and in terms of income, it's looking well. I've got my main income. I've got my side income. Um, in terms of my rate of saving, that's spot on as well. But yeah. the area that I struggled or I sort of didn't get a good score on um, was my pension. So obviously, I've always worked part time. So that's always meant that's meant that my pension contributions have always been from a part time half of the half of the pension uh, contributions that everyone else yeah. is making. So that's the area that I'm sort of lacking now, um, which is sort of where my brain is thinking that's why to focus on investing I think I'm hoping fingers crossed that I can retire quite early um and by the sounds of things it's going to be like next year you're doing you're on fire my love (laughs) (laughs) but all in balance as well I think so that's very much a, a priority of mine at the moment invest make sure I've got like a nice part that I can invest uh, that I can uh, retire quite early 
but also living a little bit as well I think is also priority yeah. for me at the moment and everything that was, gonna, that was gonna be my next question actually I was gonna ask do you have fun ever <laughs> everything is in balance I think so I definitely had an obsession with saving and and not spending money when I was in my mm. 20s my early 20s um, and that's pretty much from my childhood. I saw my parents do a very similar yeah. thing. Um, and I wanted to be in a good position to enjoy these things. I think it would have been in my, the back of my mind, spending this money and I don't really have it if that was my position. Um, so, yeah, I've definitely got to a place now where I'm like, I actually want to enjoy this. Like, yeah. I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm physically able to do lots of things. I want to go and do them. Um, and I've yeah. written... I've written out like 30 things I want to do before I'm 30. I've just done that for 40, th- 40 things be- before I'm 40. Yeah. Bloody youngins. <laughs> so, What's, on your list? What's on your list? Um, So it did have visit, visit Asia. I've been to quite a few Ooh. continents, but not Asia. So I've actually ticked that off now. Nice. Um, by going to the Maldives, um, which a different topic altogether, but I won that. <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah, Amazing. do you do like lots of competitions then? Yeah, enter lots of competitions again. This is the benefit of working part time and yeah, having free time, ready to do these things. So yeah, enter lots of competitions. Last year, do you, win, do you win a lot? I do win. Um, I'd say I'm, I, I would consider myself quite lucky. And my friends and family consider myself lucky. But then it's hard to judge, isn't it? Because I do enter a lot. So yeah, your luck increases with the amount that you enter. So- I so I I'd never really done any competitions before, but I I set myself a challenge at the beginning of the year to enter as many as I possibly could, um, and I've been en- entering the ones on the Sky Go app, and I won a go karting experience last week. I was like, this is really cool! Like I actually won something. It's so. such a good hobby. I like I think as well. I enjoy doing it because I almost imagine what would happen if I won this, and that makes it fun for me. Do, do you um, pay to enter them or do you just no, do the free I don't ones? pay to enter any. Uh, they've all been free. At this point, I've won three holidays, a wow. £1,000 in cash. Um, I've won an iPad, a phone. A nice. Watch. I've won some nice, nice. Um, in fact, I, I shared my top 10 competition win last week on Instagram. So there's there's some good ones on there. I was pretty, I enjoyed looking through what I'd won as well. Um, hotel That's about incredible. Here. Yeah, like all sorts on there. Um, so yeah, that's what that was on there. Um, there is some like free things that's on there, like climbing a mountain. I've never done that before, so that's on there. Any um, particular one? So somewhere in the UK, I think. I think to achieve it before thirty, I'm going to have to come like close Snowden to or somewhere. Yeah, mm. <laughs> but it sounds like you're so, fit enough, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, there's a few other things like you know, like take a cookery class or take a dance class, mm. that kind of stuff um yeah so there's a oh I actually a money related one invest 30,000 pounds before I'm 30 that's nice I'm only halfway there at the moment so I'm gonna have to get a move on with it but when's your birthday February oh you can do that I reckon yeah (laughs) go for it that's the big aim um just waiting until a new ISA tax year actually so I can get some tax-free investments there um but yeah th- those are some of the I think I definitely have improved my relationship with money recently I think sort of five years ago I was in a I was I was obsessed with saving yeah. I think I sort of ignored life a little bit like at university I didn't live like a university student at all mm. like I mean, who you're could? totally the opposite of me. I yeah. lived like the worst student ever. But the thing is, people don't people don't talk about saving addiction. And it's it's actually something that's never crossed my mind. As somebody who has spending addiction problems, that's completely the other side of the fence. But it is just as valid um, and probably just as unhealthy because you haven't been living your life to the fullest, really. Yeah, that's it. And like. To some extent, I don't regret what I've done because I'm in the position that I'm in. But then I think about the things that I sort of turned down or didn't do because I was mm-hmm. trying to save. And like like university, I mean, most people think about university and they think, you know, you meet loads of people, you 
go out and get that that drinking out of your system um I don't think I ever got it out of my system I think that's why I kept doing it <laughs> but that's ADHD for you it's just a repetitive habit <laughs> and you you live on your own for the first time or you live with yeah. people for the first time so you experience these things and I I didn't do any of that like I lived with my parents for the majority of university I moved out for a year and which university did you go to so I went to Sheffield Hallam and University of Sheffield um oh, again I stayed close to home which yeah. again most people probably move away from home I stayed with living with my parents um which meant you know I didn't experience living with people for the first time I didn't experience meeting a group of friends like I have friends from university but they're not like my best friends no so like a lot of people meet their best friends at university um, yeah my best friends are actually from school so I sort of feel like I missed out on integrating more in the university life. Yeah. um having those life lessons that you have at university I didn't really have them um I didn't really go out drinking a lot I think I, had, I went out one night during freshers week and that oh, was wow. it um I didn't you probably avoided freshers flu then like I went out drinking every night and, and I ended up almost dying because I got yeah. like bronchitis and it just wasn't very good <laughs> and then even like graduating and you you know you you go out and maybe travel for a bit and and mm. do new things I never really did that I was as soon as I graduated I was like right the next thing I need to do is buy my home and then as soon as I bought my home I was like right the next thing I need to do is pay off the mortgage so now that that's done I'm very aware of, of of me sort of saying, right, the next thing is to invest for a pension to retire early. But actually, yeah. I want to do stuff as well. And I think, so now I've got to that good place with the money. It's in a good position. I can start living a bit. I can start having, you know, that nice meal that I want or that girl's holiday that we've been invited on or things like that. I just want to be in a position to not say no because I need to save this money. Um, yeah. I just want to be able to just do it. And it's really healthy that you've that you've kind of you know that you made mistakes. And I think there are I mean, it, it, none of it's really a mistake because of the way the way you've done it and where you've got to. You know, there are so many people that would be jealous of that. But I think there are people don't see money problems as as what you've gone through. But that that would be a money problem, you know, saving too much. Do you find that actually now as well, now that you're parting a bit more with cash, do you find more's coming to you? A little bit, yeah. I mean, I mean, investing's a great example of that. Mm, isn't it? And yeah. I was so scared to invest. I was so worried about it, losing money. Um, and again, I've come to a healthy mindset with that. It's long term. We're leaving yeah. it there. We're not looking, we're not checking on it. It is there to do do its own thing for 10, 20 years um but yeah I've noticed that a little bit I think little things like you know I'll go to the shop and maybe previously I'd have been like right we're staying in all weekend we're not doing it going anywhere and then we get like we'll be able to get freebies which is I love getting freebies I don't think I think I could be a millionaire and I'd still love free stuff because like, who doesn't love free, free stuff free stuff is amazing <laughs> it makes you it gives you the opportunity to try something you probably would have never tried yeah um, there's the, literally that my cupboards are full of stuff that I once got free that now I keep buying because I think they're brilliant um I've, my cupboards are full and what's, of what's your best your best freebie go-to app is it like shop me or something you know I I don't want to lose my loyalty to one or the other but I'm really Ooh. enjoying green gin at the moment yeah um, I they've, they've sort of got that health slant on the freebies mm. as well and I like that um I, because because like I say you get to try new things and I'm trying something that maybe is slightly healthier than what I'd previously tried like yeah uh, we talked about drinking but there's currently two free drinks on there at the moment that that it's like alcoholic sparkling water I would have never tried that alcoholic sparkling water does it does it have a taste yeah like a fruity taste um Ooh. yeah so I, and they've been on th- that they've been on green gin every week for probably about the last three months and oh, I've really? just kept going and getting them every every week um, and now I've got like a massive stockpile of them which I'm excited to have a barbecue with is my plan um so just yeah. literally stockpiling them 
I mean, I've, I've got, an, annoyingly, it's from like some of the content I've been creating, but I've got three crates of non-alcoholic beer that I got, I got contacted by a beer company and they were like, oh, do you want to do some influencer work for us? Inf- content creation for us. Let's go with that. And I was like, yeah, 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 let's do it. Let's do it. And I did not read the fact that it was non-alcoholic beer. So I, when it turned up, first of all, it's really fizzy. So you open one and it literally smacked me in the face. And then I was just like, now I've got three crates of this non-alcoholic. It tastes really nice. It's lovely. Um, really, really nice. Big shout out to Big Job. Um, you can get a discount in my link in bio. But um, but I, I actually didn't realise it was non-alcoholic. I think I had drunk it at some point on a night where I've been driving and that had maybe just made me go oh I know that brand yeah. <laughs> but it's very tasty and actually does taste quite a lot like actual beer um but yeah I didn't know it's really good I like, and I've got these at the moment which I got from Perfect Head which like actually you can't get anywhere and they are really tasty I've just had one this morning the pear and uh, pear and ginger one which uh, yeah they they taste really weird the first time you drink one and then you're like actually that's really nice <laughs> so yeah. it's good to try new things isn't it and um yeah. it's, it's nice that you get the opportunity to do that because I think so green gin is the way forward well Emma it's been absolutely lovely to have you on uh, where can people find you so I I my main channel I guess is my blog which is www.bmoneysavvy.com that's be like a buzzy bee um it's a common mistake and it's the same on Instagram Twitter TikTok linkedin pinterest wherever it's be money savvy amazing well thank you so much for coming on um i think that we need to get you back on next year after your birthday to see how many of the things that you've done before you turn 30 um lovely to have you emma um so anybody who hasn't seen this podcast before um if you're watching it in the mad about money app you clearly know that the mad about money app exists but if you're watching it anywhere else um download the mad about money app it is free to use um it's a financial education tool and you'll see lots of amazing financial bloggers and business bloggers in there talking about how to get better with your finances. I'm Maddie Alexander-Grout. See you next time.